make some more money. Ah, oh, please do that. Let's go. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come on, man. Help me. Hey, Come on. Let's go. <laughs> Are you all right? Yes, thank you. the bell rings and I'm out of here. Dad, it's a master's degree proposal. The vice rector's sitting in to observe. He's concerned. Tell him, number one, there's a major grant that depends on my showing up for this conference. And number two, when he arches his bushy eyebrows, which he will, remind him that he's the one who authorized my laughable travel expenses. Okay, everybody, seats. Let's do it. Problem with a magnetic field. If you got it wired like this, you won't have sufficient reverse polarity. Watch what I'm doing. into his synthesis, the growing together, the fusion of man and his capability, of his planet and his resources. Power over technology equals control of destiny. If man's going to control his future, he's got to learn to control his machinery. Now, George? So what are we supposed to use with that smelter out by Highway 10? I mean, the nitrate crud it belches. One step at a time. Patience, process, perseverance. So far, we've had patience, now process. You know what a writ is? Good. Well, you call Judge Thompson. Use your facts. Get a writ. He uh, may not give it to you right away. That's where perseverance comes in. <laughs> now, let's get back to this experiment. Doing that. Not bad, Phil. Yourself? Well, about the same. Mrs. Thorner? She ain't never gonna get over it. Only daughter we. Like I said on the phone, I'm flying down there. Uh, you said there was something. Oh, well, we did it all when we was there. Everything except for her things. <laughs> Not that there's a whole hell of a lot, mind you. Thorner's all live kind of lean. You know where the things are? Well, there's a Detective Mera sent this authorization. I already signed it. Maybe you'd asked that Mera fella just what happened. I thought it was a heart attack. Nineteen years old. 
I figure maybe it was something else. Maybe it was so bad they just didn't want to. I'll look into it, Phil. Promise. Sandra was a wonderful person. Maybe the best student I ever had. Seminar classes are available in the main floor foyer and the mezzanine level. The keynote address will commence at 2 p.m. sharp. Markowitz, Stanley R. I read your boundaries to growth paper, Dr. Markowitz. It was excellent. Thank you very much, Mr. Wilson. I trust you'll be reading one of yours soon. You will, sir. Stanley. Nat. Great to see you. You look terrific. As do you, Dr. Bridger. Very fit indeed. <laughs> Still out there in the bush? Well, Norwood College, yeah. Norwood. Yeah, I've had my eye out for your publications. Yeah, well, uh... Where are you staying? Here. No, you're not. You're staying with me, my boy. Oh, thanks, Stanley, but uh, I really couldn't impose. Impose? Rubbish. Don't you know, all my protégés have to submit to my influence once in a while. <laughs> so it's settled. Dr. Markowitz, uh, we're running a little late, too. Yeah, all right, I'll see you in the lobby at 2. Oh, I've got a seminar till 2.30. Your own? Well, I'm no freeloader. <laughs> to the 12th Annual Ecological Symposium. Uh, we hope your registration wasn't as painful as it looked from our point of view. <laughs> we have had keynote addresses delivered by eminent colleagues from Germany, Japan, Australia, Belgium. Well, this year... We have a man who has been a mentor and inspiration to a great number of us, Dr. Stanley Markowitz. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Ouroboros, a symbol that appears chiefly among the Gnostics. It is a fairly bizarre creation, a dragon serpent, perhaps, that is biting its own tail. Lights, please. In a very general sense, it symbolizes time and the continuity of life. But more specifically, the primitive notion of self-sufficient nature. I'm calling on behalf of Mr. Phil Thorner. His daughter, Sandra... What's that name again? Thorner. Thorner? T-H? T-H-O-R-N-E-R. Yes, sir. I'd like to see you about his daughter. The family asked me to collect her personal... Are you a relative? Well, I've got the letter of authorization with me. So you're not a relative, right? But, uh... You see, sir, they've, they've countersigned the letter. It won't take yeah, a moment. Yeah, 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 gotcha. What do you want? According to her father, there's just a couple of suitcases. And the uh, family name is, uh... Thorner. Who signed the authorization? Her father, Phil Thorner. You're their lawyer? I mean, I'm a friend. Bridger, B.R. <laughs> Why don't I just bring this letter? Look, a report comes to me, I read it. That makes me informed. Now, everything I know, I've already told you. So if you've got anything else on your mind, you better make it fast. I don't like wasting time. Me too, but maybe you can understand what this did to her parents. 
They're friends of mine, and I'd, I'd like to tell them something. Look, cowboy, there ain't nothing else. They just felt a heart attack. She was kind of young for that. It happens. Medical report says was the probable cause of death. Probable meaning she wasn't raped, stabbed, shot, bludgeoned, strangled, or cut in little pieces. She died of a heart attack in the museum the subway station. Didn't anybody stop? I mean, to help her? Look, she died. That was it. Some old bag lady was there. Let's say she even tried to help her. Now, that ought to make her parents real happy, huh? Sure. your line, partner. Like you, pollution. Yeah? Well, for all I know, you could be some geek off the street who wants to make love to her shoes. You got some identification. I take it the attitude, the uh, wardrobe, the posture designed to let the public in on just who's in charge here. Well, it's a second-rate charade. Your style doesn't impress me. In fact, it sucks. March 18th. The Wasaga Pipeline, 250,000 gallons of Canadian crude oil. March 20th, a pressure vessel at the Rescort Oil Company, Chicago. 10,000 gallons of sul sulfur monochloride. March 25th, a storage tank in Lincoln, Nebraska. 3 million gallons of Uran-32. October 17th, the tank barge Tansert. 20,000 gallons of number six oil. This is Stanley Markowitz. I'm not available at the moment, but I'll be happy to return your call at the earliest opportunity. Please leave your name, telephone number, and you leave a message for approximately 45 seconds after you hear the beep tone. Stan, Charlie Kirshner at Morgan Brothers. I thought I'd fill you in on a few transactions we had today. You can reach him at the office around 10 tomorrow. I think he'll be pleased when you hear Hold it, Charlie. I just got in. I want to get this thing from the top. Just hold it a sec. Nat, just drop your things the first room at the top of the stairs. Hello, Charlie. You're on the air. All good news, Stan. First off, I sold you a Tomco at 25 and a quarter. Picked up 5,000 Kirkwood mines at 12 and three quarters. We rolled over the T bills and BPR notes for three days and a half. And interchemic phosphates is really going to move. It's time to get in there and buy. Statistics are a little out of date, don't you think, Nat? Well, they substantiated my point, didn't they? What have you been doing for ten years, Nat? You were from the front rank of every march and demonstration. Where were you when Three Mile blew? Come on, Stanley. 
That a robber's thing today is one of your oldest numbers. And what's this, buying into notorious mining companies and eating carcinogenic pot pies? <laughs> Where are you? I'm inside the fence, influencing power. Me too. Yeah. Who are you kidding, Nat? Your influence is on kids who hang on your every word for three credits in the fall semester. Your influence is like your statistics. It's yesterday's news. However, I have never underestimated the quality of your influence. See, I haven't changed. I still separate the trash. Cans on the right. You remember that obsessive trash separator in the law school? South African, what was his name? Mackenzie handcuffed himself to the province. Stark naked. <laughs> threw away the key. <laughs> Nat. Forget it, Stan. I have missed your beefs, your gripes, your complaints too damn long. In that case, would you mind if I forego the, uh... I think I'd like to catch a couple of the seminars tonight. I'll drive you. No, the subway's just around the corner. All right, Nat. Thanks. Nat, keep in touch. I'd like to see something of you. Twenty-five cent, mister? You got for me or no? Uh, a girl died here about a month ago. Were you the one? On phone. Lightning. No, heart attack. Did you see... No heart uh... attack. She on phone, born by lightning. You tease me? Lightning. Thanks a lot. Nobody believe. There, you see? Thanks, lady. It's okay. Go look. Chips, every last one of them. Hello? Mrs. Anderson? Yeah, that's right. Uh, is there somebody else on the phone? No. Marley, you put that down, you hear me? This is personal.
Mira. Hello, Mira. This is Nat Bridger. Look about that heart attack. I met the bag lady. You know the witness? Yeah, yeah, and she told you about the lightning and the telephone. That's right. Listen, nature boy. Any lightning she saw came out of a bottle. I did you a favor holding back on that fairy tale. Now go on back to your soybean patch and leave the police work to the grown-ups. Problem? A student of mine on scholarship died here a couple weeks ago. Apparently she had a heart attack. And? Nothing really, I guess. Eggs, bread, even granola, if you like. I've got to be at a meeting. Sure, Stan, thanks. See you at the hotel. Right, right. Tuesday. Okay, thank you. Oh, have a seat, sir. May I help you? Well, it's nothing too serious. More a matter of service, really. Uh, mechanical or otherwise? Strictly mechanical. Repair. Uh, your home phone? Well, not exactly. It's a public telephone, a museum subway station. Thank you for letting us know. We'll have someone... It's already been repaired. I'm interested in knowing... why. Well, you might try a letter to our service people. Well, I thought I'd try in person, as you can see. Perhaps your supervisor could give me a hand. I'm afraid this really isn't the right department to answer your question. Then I would like to speak to your supervisor. I'm sorry, Mr... Bridger. And let's not make a big deal out of this. Uh, please, your supervisor. I'll be right back. R.T.? Ridley Taylor. Dollar says you don't make it past second base. A place like this, I'd want odds. Guy came in last week. I figured he was about a 10 to 1 shot. Then he pulled a gun out. Good thing I didn't bet. Dangerous work. It's the silent observers that kill you. Do you like it? Well, it's not right. It's not right. Well, it'll short out. Look, Holmes Law. Not enough resistance in the circuit for the amperage coming in off the yellow lead. That's not a lead, it's a line. There are yellow lines and red lines and circles, rectangles. But it won't work. It's not supposed to work. Why not? Forget I mentioned it. Modrian, Clay, now Mr. they turn, Bridger. turn me on. Detail without losing substance. You know what I mean? Mr. Bridger, Mr. Websell. John Websell, have a seat. What can I do for you, Mr. Bridger? I'm interested in a telephone repair at the museum subway station. In what way, exactly? Well, I don't know exactly. Uh, about a month ago, a young woman had a heart attack there. A witness suggested it might in some way be related to a telephone. I noticed that one of a series of public phones had been replaced and well, maybe the two are related. Uh, I don't know, a uh, malfunction or something. That'd be impossible, of course. Of course. But maybe I could just find out why the phone was replaced. <laughs> I suspect it didn't work. Could we speak with someone in your service department? With all respect, Mr... Um... Bridger. With all respect, Mr. Bridger, 
And I'm not saying you environment people don't do a lot of good. It's just that, well, statistics show sometimes the do-gooder attitude arises in people who are, shall we say, basically paranoid. Anything else? Name of the repairman. I see. Well, maybe you've got a point. Why don't you have Miss Fremantle take down the particulars and whatnot, and uh, we'll get back to you at your hotel. Well, thanks for your time. Oh, Mr. Websall, uh, I didn't say what I did, or even where I'm staying. Or did I? Any final questions? Yeah. How's a guy get a plush job like yours in a zoo like this? <laughs> Experience, primarily. An admiration for a complex industry and a willingness to communicate its strengths to a public that's curious enough to want to know. Ah. Do I get my dollar, Mr. Bridger? Yeah, I guess you do. Hey, if it hurts that much, forget it. You know what hurts? What really hurts is someone glorifying something she doesn't understand. What don't I understand? Ohm's law? No, that. Ah. You gonna tell me about it? I'd like to. So why don't you? Over dinner? Where? You know the ballroom, the Biltmore Hotel? There's a conference. What time? Nine. Okay. Hello. Um, I'd like to report the theft to one of your telephone receivers, the southbound platform of the Museum Subway Station. Museum Station? That's right. I'll report it. Thank you. Well, you're sure welcome. We're very grateful, sir. Bye. Somebody really did a number. Clean as a whistle. Bowl cutters. Second one they zapped down here this month? Yeah. Bowl cutters again? No. Oh, hell, you wouldn't hardly believe it. Some turkey must have taken a flamethrower to the receiver. 
Just the receiver, huh? Yeah. There wasn't even a mark on the box there. Don't really make sense. Could it have been the voltage? Maybe some in the electroacoustic transducer. There's no kind of phone free? Gym teacher. You know, basketball or phys ed. White shadow. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Maybe a voltage malfunction. Nah. It's only about 40 volts going through there when you're talking. About 100 when it actually rings. Never enough amps to melt them all. Melt them all? You mean it's happened more than once? Oh, yeah. You got a couple others down at the lab there. Like uh, some hot dog must have taken a look at his phone bill and uh, bought himself a blowtorch. <laughs> Then I got a Royal College scholarship and three years in London with Myers and Douglas, Saul Rubowitz. Oh, that influence was incredible. What influence? High tech. It's like a, it's like a new concept in wilderness. Like expressways used to be about 15 years ago. You find expressways beautiful? Well, in their own way. You have to abstract them from their context. Tell me something, Marty. Where does it all hit you? Here? Or here? I don't get it. Well, if you see a spider's web, do you let yourself think of dewdrops and a misty morning, or do you just think geometry? I don't think about problems. I just think about opportunities. Never had the advantage of suffering. But it doesn't diminish my sensitivity or my talent. Well, that's good. What's good? The advantage of suffering. Sorry about that. You don't know what it's like to be kept waiting. <laughs> hey, are you weird? Or... Cherry can kill you. Why not a telephone? You don't eat telephones. Besides, the police would know about something that wild, wouldn't they? Hmm. Oh, I forgot. You think that the police are part of the cover-up? And I forgot. You work for them. Must be a real pain in the ass going through life, thinking that there's a water gate behind every closed door. It's worse when you find out there really is. Look. They want a mural. They give me free access to anything that I want. Photographs, diagrams, blueprints, tours of labs. It's all there for the asking. That sound like a conspiracy to you? Grab a cab. We could share it. Different directions. Stanley Markowitz. Long distance for Nat Bridger? Yes, he's here. Chief Parker, no police gonna talk. There's no problem. 
Just wait till I get him. Appreciate it. Bridge up! Telephone! Your hometown's tracked you down. Who? Your local chief of police. Accumulated parking tickets. Hi, Tom. What'd you find? This Mira, Detective 69th Precinct. That's right. Got a hold of his record. Yeah. He's the son of a bitch involved in that Kaminsky case, you remember? That was Mira? Damn near cost him his job. Big investigation. You're kidding. So you gonna tangle with him? Yeah. Wanna hear more? Yeah. 32 indictments, 12 convictions. How many? 12. Kaminsky, that's the big one. A couple of years ago. What year? 78. I'll get back to you with more, okay? Oh, that's fantastic. Anytime. Just holler. Hey, thanks, Tom. You're a prince. Wait for my call. I'll do that. You take care of yourself. Thanks again. Take it easy, yeah? Bringing the whole gang in on this one, huh? Local police, undergrad co-eds, maybe even the high school band. Just updating my research. You know with that so long as you can get published. Who knows? I do. This gumshoe routine is child's play. God damn it, Nat, you're an educator. Don't lose sight of your priorities. I've told you nothing but facts, Stanley. The least you can do is acknowledge that they don't add up. They don't fit into this cheap little paperback plot you're cooking up. These are responsible people you're talking about. You know them? I know. How well? I'm their environmental consultant. You really are inside the fence. Yes, Nat, and I've earned it. These people have funds that could give us a major breakthrough. If there was anything going on, I'd be the first to know about it. Wrong, Stanley. We're usually the last. Mira! What do I use to get rid of you? A stick, a spray, or a roll-on? Look, you son of a bitch, you're a public servant, not a stand-up comic. I've come to you for help. Bridger, if I was an L.A. cop, I'd shoot you right here in the elevator. Since I'm not, I'm gonna let you talk before I shoot you. One, I want you to call the coroner. Find Cardiac out. arrest as a result of acute respiratory failure. That's what the coroner report says. You know, some people got a memory for baseball statistics. Me, I memorize COD, cause of death. And find out if those symptoms are consistent with electric shock. Two, I want you to get a writ. Subpoena the paperwork of the lineman who repaired the telephone at the museum station. Three, check through your jackets and see if there have been any similar deaths in the past couple of days. When you've found all that out, you can get me at 555-7668. You're telling me that a telephone killed a girl? I'm leaning in that direction. Let me ask you one thing. In a city of four million people, how come you're the only one that thinks that? In a city of four million people, I'm the only one who's thought about it. June 1978, a man named Albert Kaminsky was murdered. In this whole city, only one man believed the killer was Deputy Mayor Stanton, one of the most popular city officials in history. You. Jesus, where'd you dig that out? Politicians came down on you, the media, even your own department was totally outraged, but you hung in there, didn't you? 20 years. 32 indictments, 12 convictions, single-handed, not bad. What's happened since then? You go on the take or do you just say to hell with it? Let the elevator go, Bridger. You're holding up traffic. The other one's on the fritz. little information is all I need. Nobody will know where it came from. It's company property. You said it was there for the asking. I'm asking. I don't think you understood what I was offering. I knew what you were offering. What about the research section? Laboratories, that sort of thing. Upstairs. Yeah, 
thanks. Wait a minute. Let me see. Nice pictures. Hey, who the hell are you? Talk, hey, man. Hey, who are you working for, huh? I'm just a tourist, man. You know, I'm just taking pictures. Hey, son of a bitch. Talk. Hey, somebody Talk. call the cops. This guy's crazy. Call the cops. Who put you up to this, huh? Tell me. Tell me. Hey! Tell me. Tell me. Let go. Let go. Let go. Telephone, please. Markowitz. Stanley, they found you. Hello? Hey, don't hang up. I only get one call. Where are you now? The downtown police station, damn it. What? I'm under arrest, Stanley. What is the charge? They're still adding them up. Can you get me out? Of course so. God, it's just like the old days. Now remember now. You don't have to tell them anything beyond your name. Some things you never forget. All right. You can't doubt it now, Stanley. They're covering up. Hey, try this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look, I'll talk to Fred Waits. Waits? Yeah, the president. Good man. I've known him for years. He'll talk off the record. There are no such animals off the record. Besides, there's a better way to get inside. But you have in mind... We're going to take the tour. For God's sake, why? Patience, process, perseverance. Now, whoever taught me that? We are approaching the area where we can see into our system's control room. Satellite bounce, microwave relay, international communications time lag. All the calculations are made from this room. By the year 2000, there will be 1.4 trillion phones in the world, including cable, switches, Long-distance facilities, the cost will amount to approximately $1,000 per phone. That's what I call an industry. Now, this telephone system involves the use of half a million miles of conductive wire, enough to circle the globe 20 times. This is ESS, the Electronic Switching System. If necessary, it has the capacity to handle 100,000 calls per second. Naturally, we are computerizing and miniaturizing constantly. As our scientists develop new and more sophisticated systems, we can look forward to the day when this entire conflict can be housed in a space 150 the area of its present requirement. When that occurs, we will be able to pass our operating This is where I get off. What? Fishing expedition. Matt, you can't. If anybody comes after me, give them a little of your bullshitizing, will you? You can't do, do that. Do what you do best. Matt! Uh, sir, I'm afraid you must stay with the tour. I'm sorry, sir, but these are restricted areas. I am aware of that. My name is Stanley Markowitz. I'm with the company. Could I see your clearance pass? You don't understand. Senior consultant, environment. But you don't have a pass. Will you call Fred Waits on the 16th floor? I know where the executive offices then are located. speak to him. He'll explain to you who I am. Once the tour is finished, I'm sure we'll be able to follow the proper procedures. 
But while you're on my tour, I'm responsible. Wasn't there another gentleman? With me? No. Shall we carry on? Send a thing like that down the line. You from the recall lab? Uh, no, just visiting. Yeah, where from? Uh, up north, printing microprocessor chips, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. What do you think? <laughs> Boys in the recall lab want to know too. That's why I thought. Uh... Anyways, sure, yeah. Use the receiver as a capacitor. Store up the voltage input to the point of spontaneous discharge, and. Uh... That sounds simple. Not really, no. You working on it or something? Uh, sort of, yeah. Where'd you say the recall lab was? Sub basement, A360. Thanks. Winner's here. Give me a Webster and PR, will you? Now, this space houses our power monitor. It was designed and built by our cybernetics branch in 1977 at a cost of $450 million. The system draws its power from three different sources, with two being used as backup generators. Sir? Yes? Doesn't it seem sort of a waste of man's resources using all that copper wire to transport electrical energy? Perhaps Mr. Markowitz could answer your question. Uh, did you uh, hear the question, Mr. Markowitz? I did. Electrical energy can do things that fiber optics cannot. Uh, for instance, Mr. Markowitz? Fiber optics cannot ring a bell. Wow, really? I left a whole slew of calculations in there. Here, sir. Thank you. Right there, Bridger. Will all non-company 
personnel please leave the building. Will all non-company personnel please leave the building immediately? Will all non-company personnel please leave the building? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time to appreciate the complexities of our industry. I work here. I am a consultant. I am a senior consultant. Fire What's happened, Les? Some guy broke into the recall lab. What guy? Some environmental snoop. All company personnel, please have identification ready. All company personnel, please have identification ready. Artia. Bastard. You'll be hearing from my lawyers, Mr. Bridger. She was coerced, Wepsil. She's not responsible. All right, that's it. Let's go. Go home, Mr. Bridger. The law protects us from people like you. Yeah? And just what the hell protects the people from people like you? I've seen the telephones, Webb, so you know I know. I don't know about any telephones, Bridger. And what you know gets you less than bus fare. Just go, will you? Don't let them fool you, R.T. They're scared. <laughs> They're scared. They run the world, and they're scared of what? Of you? Tough neck, Bridger? What are you doing? I'm taking you up on your offer. You gonna fight him? Gonna win? Yeah, just a minute, please. Stanley Markowitz. Stanley, I've been talking to that goddamn answering machine of yours. Four phones, all melted down by some kind of sound electrical charge. Stanley, we gotta, we gotta go public with this thing. Absolutely not. I'm gonna confront weights with it, see where they are, force them to move on it themselves. Stanley, you're stalling. We're after solutions, Nat, not prizes. I'll call you. How long? I'll try to call him tonight. You'll be there? Uh... Yeah. What we see here is a slide of the Mediterranean Sea. Now, there was a time when this... <laughs> Bridger has seen the phones. I know that. The question is, what are you doing about it? He wants to go to the mass media. You've been paid to contain it. Look, all right. You said that if 
if you had enough lead time, your people could solve the problem. What we do and how we do it is our business. Ever since that student of his died, you said he might be trouble. That, we agreed, was your business. Now, what the hell are you going to do about it? Look, he is out of control. He knows I'm talking to you. He's going to want an answer. So give him answers, Markowitz. Get him the hell back on track. Punched in the mouth. I grew up on knuckles and boots. Gave me my terrific sense of humor. Ah. <laughs> when I was a little girl, I don't know, I guess I was 12 or maybe I was 13, one of my stepfathers, not quite sure which one it was, we got into this incredibly dumb argument about skirts and pants, and he just hauled off and hit me with a closed fist. Never argued after that. Anyway, since then, uh, I don't know. I've always just been sort of afraid to fight back, you know, I just... I thought you said you never had the advantage of suffering. Well, not in the real way. There's only one way. Where'd he hit you? your chance to control your environment. Now I found a way of controlling mine. You're getting too close. Close to what? I don't know. <laughs> Nobody bought it between nine and five, so our killer's got to pick a victim by day, knock him off at night. Maybe he works downtown, spends some kind of a weird lunch hour. Markowitz worked around here, too. Thought he was some kind of a college professor. He was a consultant at the telephone company. Interesting. Let's move him. Makes it neat. That's a double, sir. What? The phone company. That other guy. The one after the subway. That's where he got it. 
Last night, Markowitz was going to call Waits, the president, and talk to him about all this. Waits. Okay. Let's go right to the top. You want an apology? I just want the son of a bitch who did it. Yeah, so do I. Mr. Waits, please. My name is Mara. This is Mr. Bridger. Is he expecting you? His wife's been in a car accident. Mrs. Waits? Yep. Cut her nearly right in half. <gasps> oh, God! Oh, come with me. I just hate wasting time. I'm sorry, Mr. Waits, but could you... Do we address the uh, They're from the police, Mr. Waits. I'm so sorry. Commissioner sent you? You talked to Stanley Markowitz last night. I explained everything to the commissioner. What did you explain? Now, that's not your concern. It sure as hell is, if a telephone can be a lethal weapon. Just exactly who are you? We are the forces of goodness and mercy, Mr. Waits. I am Mara, he is Bridger. Yes, He's... I know the name. Then you know what I've seen. A few telephones under repair. To hell with him. Let's go to the media. You really think that's a responsible thing to do? Create mass hysteria, get us shut down. Do you realize what that would mean? About two dozen people would die every 60 seconds because they couldn't contact a doctor, a policeman, a fireman. Quite a price to pay just to stop one single madman. You had any ransom demands? No. Malcontents, weirdos. It's all being looked after by the brightest and best at every level. Yeah, every level except police. The commissioner is being kept fully informed. Now, please, if you don't mind. I do mind, Wiz. I mind the smug attitude where you dictate information to the law. That says you're above the law. You got an inside track? Yeah. Jack Gilsdorf, assistant commissioner. I got him in training, helping him get the right attitudes. I'll get back to you. Okay. I want you to take a little trip. Visit some of those sensitive relatives of yours. Just a couple days. Are you kidding? Give up show business? Listen, Ridley, Stanley hit somebody's nerve and got his head blown off. I gotta be close to the same nerve. That could put you in real danger. Look, I'm not going. That's settled. Now, how do I get a hold of you if something happens? I'll call you. Ring once, hang up, and then ring again, okay? Okay. What are you gonna do? He had the closing address tomorrow. I wanna give him one last row. This system has a 43.6% self-sufficient okay. temperature. Hey, want to plant in the audience? Front row center. I'll be there. Bye. Four twenty. Thanks. Taylor, I'm sorry about your mural. Uh, you have a real talent. Thanks, that's nice. Is your friend here for the big symposium? Taxi! Oh, Nat Bridger, yes. He was on my tour. He seems like a very bright man. Oh, yes. In fact, he's going to be the closing speaker tomorrow. Good for him. Bye, Noah. 737 Waterloo, please.
Now there was a time when...
RT, I've got the voice, and I think I recognize it from someplace, but, uh... Son of a bitch. Have you got a tape recorder there, a, a cassette player? Oh, sure. Because you know who I know in this town, and it sounds familiar to me, so... This first part is with Waits. You said you have broken me. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Listen to the second part. Yes. You had your chance to control your environment. I found me controlling mine. You're getting too close. Oh, I told him. Not that it was Clayton. That's Noah Clayton, the tour guide. I told him where to find you. Detectives. Mira, please. Detective Mira is not available. Could I have him return your call when he comes in? Tell him Nat. Bridger call. He can get me at 555 4320. 4320. It's urgent. Delroy Drive. What? It's right there. Noah Clayton. 108 Delroy Drive. Delroy Drive. Wait. I'm coming with you. No, you hang on here. Look, somebody's got to tell Mira about this. Keep calling him or be here when he calls. Okay. Matt, hmm? don't do anything stupid. Hey. I got a PhD. <laughs> Fast, Bridger. I like your style. RT, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah? Bridger, Jack Gilsdorf, Assistant Police Commissioner. Pulled a few strings for me on that Kaminsky thing. Hello? Pleased to meet you. A couple of my men just missed you at Clayton's. Of course, we had checked his employment records. They all show the Delroy address. Have you heard the tape? Positive. What do we do now? I want to find out for myself the extent of this thing. You know? 
a handle on who's involved? And we know just the guy that can tell you. Talk to the commissioner. This is Mr. Gilsdorf. He's here to represent the commissioner's office. Right, Mr. Gilsdorf? That's right. This is now an official police matter. And you can forget about any previous understanding. Clayton hit Stanley because he was moving in on him. If he's convinced he got Ridley, that leaves only me, and he knows where I'm going to be tomorrow morning. Are you set up to, to trace if he calls? Tracing's a myth, Bridger. ESS the size of us could take five, maybe six minutes. I'll keep him on the line if he calls. What if you can't? He was on the line all of six seconds with me. You know anything about electrical flashback? Of course. We've got couplers hooked into the system to guard against uh, vaporizing the ESS. Exactly. But if Clayton hasn't bothered to install couplers on his system, then we can redirect sound and voltage back to the point of origin. It's nice to see all those years behind books paid off. You want the voltage coils down there yet? Of course I want them down there. How much time do you think we got? All aboard. What's his opening? This conference has cause for optimism. Our ranks are flourishing. We're at the dawn of one of the most... Go on. We are at the dawn of one of the most powerful lobbying forces ever imagined. Couldn't you use one of those conference intercoms? That way you wouldn't have to touch the phone. Changes the sound of your voice, you know. But you could... What else? Concrete goals are within our grasp. Odds are the call will come through on the main number, sometimes just for 10. Uh, from a local exchange? Yeah, I'd say you're looking at a four-digit trace. This is going to take some time. God damn it, I started as a lineman. I know how long it's going to take. One moment, please. I'll connect you right away. Bill Moore. Hold the line, please. Room 212 isn't answering, sir. Would you care to leave a message? Bill Moore. Yes, sir, I'll connect you right away. Damn. Now, what do you got in the way of a capacitor bank for 20,000 volts? Mark's generator should do it. You got it? I'll get it. Did you isolate a room? This way. Hey, Joe. Hand me a pair of dikes over there, will you? Gotta keep them talking long enough to trace the call. Then maybe the guys down the hall can reverse the power. Maybe. that inspiration with an intelligence and an intensity that is entirely his own. Dr. Nat Bridger. Anything? Nothing yet. I have in front of me the note Stanley Markowitz was preparing for this session. If he were here now, he'd tell you, they're bullshit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the world is gonna die unless we turn around and fight. We've gotta become noisy, radical, and insubordinate. Now, I know what I'm gonna do about it. So what the hell, Stanley Markowitz would have wanted me to ask, are you going to do about it? Ecological Symposium.
Incoming. Incoming. Damn. Acceptable casualty levels? Acceptable to whom? To working men and women? To our, our children? To our children's children? Mankind's destiny is not to become fodder for his own technology. The guy's on the line. Let's go. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We're paging him in the ballroom, sir. I'll put you through in just a moment. I'll take the call. No go. Why not? It's what I get paid for. Clayton won't know the difference. He hasn't heard your voice. And yeah, nobody has for too damn long. Thanks anyway, Mary. First digit, seven. Log on seven. Repeat, seven, first digit. to speak to Nat Bridger. This is Bridger. Now listen, Clayton. You're a brilliant man, Clayton. But you've got to let us help you. You damn fool. I'm helping you. I'm helping you get rid of the world's real garbage. Log on three, second digit. Log on three, second digit. All those people make us feel stupid and inadequate. Who treat integrity like dirt, who denies our dignity. Was Sandra Thorner one of those people? Subway station. That was a test. I didn't even know her name. She was an innocent human being, goddammit. And so is Ridley Taylor. Lock on nine. Third digit. Clayton, listen to me. You've... you've lost track of the enemy. You can't tell the innocent from the guilty. Fiber optics was mine, Bridger. They stole my vision. They stole everything. House, wife, children. They destroyed my life. You've got to stop. Now. You've got to let us help you. You don't care about people like me. Nobody does. You're stalling for time. You're trying to trace this call. Well, time is up, Bridger. Two. Lock on two. incident, Bridger. If it can be done once, well, you understand the rules of the game. Only rule I know is publish or perish. I'd like my mural put back. Well, that could be arranged. A few changes I'd like to make. Artist's prerogative. A couple of angles I hadn't thought about before. 
Miss Taylor, there's nothing that you can paint or Bridger can publish which could be harmful to us for very long. You believe him? I'd be out of work if I did. Nat. Dr. Nat Bridger, please come to the green telephone. Dr. Nat Bridger to the green <laughs> telephone, please. Bridger. This is Al Hislop. I'm with the Public Safety Department of the city. I heard what you did today. Great job. Thank you. Look, Bridger, I have some people who would like to see you. Might have a slot for you. I don't fill slots anymore, Mr. Hislop. There's about a dozen issues waiting for me back home. I'm only asking for a moment of your time. I know you care as much about the environment as I do. Just listen to me. Kemp, excuse me. I never well shown a bet. I'll call you.